Hey everybody, today we're talking sports photography, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's go. All right, folks, stick with me to the end of this video and I will show you eight characteristics that sports editors generally look for in good sports photos. At the same time, I'll also show you some bad or ugly examples, all from my own galleries. Because frankly, you know, when I was starting out, I wasn't so good. All right, let's get started. As I said before, I'm using my own photos for these illustrations, not because I think they're all that. In fact, there's photographers out there who just do stuff that blows me away. However, I own the photos, so I can say good or bad things about them. And as I go through this, even with the photos that I consider, you know, illustrate those good characteristics, I'm gonna point out some of the flaws because not every photo is perfect. And I, there's things I wish I had done a little bit differently or edited a little bit differently. So with that, let's get going. Let's start with the good. There are generally eight characteristics that we look for in good sports photos. Now, you're not gonna be able to find all eight in a single photo. That would be pretty hard to do, quite frankly. But the more you have in there, the better. All right, guys, let's talk about peak of action. And what I mean by peak of action is the photograph captures whatever is going on at that point in time at the, like the highest level you can imagine where everything is coming together to illustrate whatever the activity was at that time. In this first photo, we've got boys who are playing uh, flag football. Uh, both of these guys are going out for the pass and they're both leaping for it. You can see the ball right here. It's hard to imagine a photo that, does, that shows the action more than this one right here. So peak of action. So in this next photo, uh, okay, so it's not as quite as dynamic as the previous one was, but if the focus of my photos is this uh, lineman right here, peak of action is he is a, it, you know, they've hiked the ball. He's about to go toe to toe with this defender right here and he's got his eyes locked on him so you know exactly what's going to happen we could take it a little bit farther it could you know be engaging with him physically but the fact that you could see him so clearly here you know exactly what's going on right there again peak of action next thing i want to talk about is is the face visible as you can see in this photo the face is clearly visible the bonus is you can really see his eyes the only thing that would take this photo just maybe to the next level is if the player was looking in the general direction of the camera. Uh, that really adds to the, the enhancement. But if you're selling these photos to parents, to players, which I was in this case, I mean, just the fact that you could see his face so clearly in this photo, those people are gonna wanna buy those photos. And in fact, this photo did sell. The other thing I would point out in this photo is peak of action. He was just about to catch this ball. Uh, maybe one frame later, it was already in his chest, but you know clearly what's going on here and, and it shows the action at its culmination point. Next thing I want to talk about is ball in the frame. If you're photographing a sport that involves a ball, a puck, some other device that people use, throw around, it's essential, well, it's, it's preferred that that device be in the photo. So as you see in this case, we got a, the ball. In the previous photo, you, had, you also had the balls in the photo except for that picture of the lineman. But obviously, you, you know what's going on here. If this ball wasn't here, it would just be guys falling on top of each other. But you instantly could see what's going on and they're fighting for this ball, basically. A nice expression on the face here from him getting, uh, from him basically getting tackled. Uh, you can also see the expression on this guy's face here. If I were to critique this photo, uh, I kind of wish these, you know, these legs weren't cut off and this arm wasn't cut off on the side. But because of just what's going on right here and that look on his face, uh, I think it kind of makes the photo. Another example, ball in the frame right here. Here's the ball. Uh, if this photo was cut off about right here, um, this photo, it, it just wouldn't be the same. You, you see the exertion on his face, which is great, and that's what you, you want. Again, going back to faces visible, peak of action, uh, it's all there. But if that ball wasn't there, it just wouldn't be the same photo, and I wouldn't even use it. Now I want to talk about cropped for impact. So you're seeing the final photo that's already been edited. Um, so good things about the photos, you can see the, uh, the face, you can see the activity, it's peak of action. Now let me show you the unedited version. So this is the original photo, you can see all this extra 
space around them. This adds zero to this particular photo. This is where the photo is, right here. This is what you want to crop down to. Crop for impact. Now, the problem is with these types of photos is shot at night, high ISOs is the more you crop them, the more degradation you get in the photo. There's, you're cutting out all those pixels. All these pixels are getting cut out and not being used in the photo to, for the main subject. So you often hear the phrase, fill the frame. It applies totally in sports, and in this case, it could have been bad. However, the camera I had was, is pretty darn good, and I was able to clean this up and make it not so bad. I'm gonna show you an example later on in this video where cropping down this far did not go well. It was on a camera that wasn't as good at night and the pixels are just horrible, but I'll show that to you later. The next thing I wanna talk about is multiple players in the photo. So, okay, peak of action, but he's interacting with another player. And I know you've seen this in previous photos, this photo illustrates the combat, the battle, the fight for this particular ball as they're pick going for a rebound. So interaction with other players. Again, you saw that in some of my previous photos and you'll see it in, in ones that fall from here. But if you can get multiple players from different teams battling for the ball, it really adds to the, uh, the scene and the peak of action. Now, let me talk about what's not so good about this photo. Look at this background, it's so busy. And then there's, you know, I was in a gym, the uh, background was lit as well as the court, and you know, it was shot wide open, so this is about the best you could do. However, we try to avoid such a cluttered background. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. The cool thing about shooting a field at night is you generally have very dark backgrounds, which make them look far cleaner. The other technique to get these nice, soft backgrounds is to shoot as wide open as possible. You know, newer photographers, they might want to stop down their apertures to get more depth of field. The problem is then all this background becomes far more in focus and more distracting. This is so, you know, nice, clean background. In fact, it's so clean that you can see, hopefully you can see this on, on YouTube, you can actually see the the particles from the turf coming off their bodies as they're flying through the air. Some other factors here, you see the face, there's the ball, it's peak of action, and it's crop for impact. The original photo had a bunch of stuff on here on the outside, and there's multiple players interacting with each other. Another photo to illustrate clean background. So in this particular activity, this is a uh, a flag football game, they were playing at a school, in a schoolyard, and in, in the background here is the school. This was shot with a 3028 wide open. Again, shot wide open, because I wanted to make this background as soft as I possibly could, and make these guys right here stand out from the background. Um, to the most, for the most part, it was successful. Yeah, you could see this person back here walking along, but it is pretty soft. I couldn't get it much softer than it is right now. Uh, while we're at it, peak of action, I don't, I'm not sure how much more you could take it from there. There's a ball, there's faces, there's interaction with multiple players. So this photo generally hits all the marks you're normally looking for in a sports photo. Next thing I want to talk about is showing emotion. Now this one kind of breaks the rules that I already talked about to a certain extent. So in this particular case, this is a lineman, and he is celebrating that his team just scored a touchdown. Now, positives, clean background. There's a little bit of, little bit of uh, not so much a noise. It's been cleaned up for the most part, but it is kind of a bit hazy in the background, but not horrible. There's no ball in it. There's not a lot of interaction with other players, although there are other players. But what you do get is you get his face, you get the emotions, and... If you're selling photos, this is a great item for, for that particular person or his parents to buy. So showing emotion. Another jubilation or emotion photo. This guy's got a nice bright look on his face, real happy, big smile. Um, I remember this particular event as a freshman football game. He had, if I remember correctly, he had just intercepted a pass and run it in for a touchdown. And he was running back to the bench 
hollering and, and showing a tons and tons of emotion here. So overall, pretty good photo. Now, if I could change anything about this photo, I wish this other player wasn't here or maybe moved off to the side a little bit because uh, he's kind of distracting from the overall view. Background's pretty clean. It's about as clean as you're going to get another 300 to 8 photo. But as far as showing emotion, he definitely has it. Next item I want to talk about is telling a story. So in this photo, you're not going to see some of the things I talked about before. There's no ball. There's no interactions with other teams. But what it does have is emotion, tons of emotion here. If you know anything about football, you know if a team wins a, a huge game, in this case it was a uh, state championship, they like to dump the uh, water jug, the Gatorade jug, on top of the coach at the very end. Luckily, I was anticipating that and got into a decent position to catch it. And with that high frame rate on the camera I was using, I was just, just caught this wave of, of water flowing over him. Uh, the frame before this and the frame after that, not as good. If there's a downside to this particular photo, I was shooting into the sun. That couldn't be helped. I was where I was at the time. And so there's, there's the shun, sun rays coming through here. I was able to clean it up for the most part on his sweater. Couldn't really do it here without a lot of work. So I, I just decided to let it go. But as, as far as telling a story, you, if you know anything about football, this tells you the story. You know exactly is what has happened here. Another example of telling a story. So it kind of looks like this guy is just getting tackled. He's at the end of the run. This guy is trying to tackle him. But you know what the story here is because this other player back here is got his arms up in the air in the universal signal for a touchdown. So you know, looking at this photo immediately, this guy, who is a quarterback by the way, has just scored a touchdown. You can't tell. Now, as far as the other features, you can see his face, you can see his eyes, interaction with another player, you got the ball in the photo, the background is pretty soft. Again, this is a 300 2.8 I, I shot this on. So you definitely know what's going on when you look at this photo. In this next segment, I'm gonna talk about some of the problems you often see in sports photography from newer photographers who are just learning. But before I do that, in the comments below, tell me some of the problems you often deal with in sports photography and the things that you work on to make yourself better. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe, hit that like. And now you get to see some of my early work that I didn't do so well in, but I got better and so will you. This guy I'm about to show you is from several years ago and it was my first real effort to shoot with a digital camera, sporting event at night in a very dark high school field. Um, I had had a history earlier in my life of photographing sports at a variety of different levels, but that was all on film. And then I spent about 20 years in the Army. After that Army gig, I decided to get back into photography. So I thought, go, okay, go down to the local high school and start taking photos. Well, that's what I did. The problem is, the camera I had was, it's okay, it was a medium low level camera, but I didn't really know how to set it up correctly, and I did not know how to edit my photos at that time. I've gotten a lot better since then, but in this gallery, I'll show you a lot of the mistakes I made, Hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and improve your own photography. Hey guys, for this first photo, you could, we could talk about a lot of things with this. You know, for example, problem with cropping for impact. But uh, the thing I really want to hit on is focus. And if we key in on the main subject's face here, you can see it is not sharp. The uh, lettering here, the Rydell is not sharp. And you really just, you don't want to have focuses like this. If you're trying to sell this photo to somebody, they're going to want to see this main subject's face nice and clear and sharp. And to do that, you have to magnify it to 100%. So go into whatever your editing software happens to be, magnify it to 100% and you'll see what I mean. So staying on the subject of sharp eyes, this is uh, another photo from that particular gallery. Again, lots of stuff out here that doesn't need to be there can be cut out we need a crop for impact but besides that talking again about eyes look at this one hopefully you can see this eyes on this this ball carrier are sharp his face mask is sharp the Rydell right here is sharp his the numbers on his uniform are sharp this is a sharp photo so this is generally a keeper all we had to do was really just uh, crop it down to this area right here and you had a keeper photo. Now there's other issues with it. It's a little grainy. 
And at the time I took this, I didn't really know how to handle graininess very much. My camera did handle the, um, the noise itself, but it still got plenty of grain. So we'd have to clean that up. But of the group, this one's not horrible. Uh, I just needed to crop it a little bit better than it was. This photo has several problems with it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show a couple different things. First of all, tilting horizon. You see this horizon right here is tilting. You just don't wanna do that. It, I've heard people try to make, make it out this is somehow artistic. It's not, don't do that. The best way to uh, judge whether or not a photo is level or not is instead of looking at a horizon, you actually look at a vertical. See this vertical over here? You can see it's tilted off to the side. When you go in your editing software, actually use these verticals to uh, create uh, a good horizon. The reason being is sometimes horizons will throw you off. It's, if it's receding into the, uh, the background, it'll be actually be at an angle. So, but with verticals, you don't have to worry about that. Okay, next I wanna talk about noise and grain. So this picture itself is not horrible. It's got a horizon, a little bit of horizon issue. Should be cropped down to about right here. The problem when you do that is you get a lot of all this grain and noise as we talked about before. Again, it's not necessarily noise. The uh, software actually cleaned up the noise for me, but it left a lot of grain. As far as sharpness, actually it's not pretty bad. It's not too bad at all. But grainy, it's, it, it's got that. Okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is crop for impact. I mentioned in previous ones, all this excess stuff out here, not very helpful. You wanna crop it down, and here's an edited version. All that extraneous stuff is gone. Actually, and I actually cleaned up some of the colors and made them nicer looking. Cleaned up some of the grain, but some of it, unfortunately, is still there. It did, I was able to sharpen up his face pretty well. So overall, it's an improved photo. Um, I still wouldn't turn it into an editor just because of the grain factor. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about cropping too much. Uh, you'd seen this photo earlier with the tilt. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna edit it as best I can by cutting, cropping for impact, right? But let me show you what happens when you do that. So here's the edited version. So it's brightened up. It's, it's generally, if you look at it from a distance, eh, it's not so bad, right? It's fair, pretty sharp in here, lots of peak of action, but when I, bring it down to about 100%. Even after it's been edited and run through a couple different software programs, just tons and tons and tons of grain out here. It, it's so pixelated in the, the person's face and in their body. It's, what's happened is it's been cropped too much and there just weren't, weren't enough pixels to work with. This is especially bad with high ISO, uh, low or high ISO, high noise reduction type situations and you crop down. There's so much degradation in the photo when you kind of do that. It, this happens during daytime photos, by the way, too, but it's not as bad because your ISO is like 100, 200, something like that. It's not nearly as bad, but in these dark, you know, high ISO situations, if you crop too much, the photo just kind of falls apart, as you can see right in here, and it just doesn't work. So be mindful of that as you're taking your photos, fill the frame. Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. I hope you learned something. Be sure you comment below about you know, problems you're having with your own sports photography and, and areas you need to work on. And while you're here, hit the subscribe, hit the like, and check out a couple of the other videos. I'll see you next time.